Hello YouTube, this is Frugal and this is the A2A Simulation T6 Texan. Now, some of you are already aware this came out quite some time ago. It actually came out about a year ago. Just over, no, about a year ago. Seriously, about a year ago. Maybe more than that. I just haven't done a video on it. I have been practicing with it. I haven't spent as much time in the aircraft as I would have liked. But uh, I guess, let me, let me give you a little bit of history on this, first of all. This A2A make absolutely the best, without question, the best period aircraft, period. Simple as that. Their Spitfire, the Jug, the B-17 is my all-time favorite aircraft ever, and the T-6 Texan are... There's nothing that can compete with them. They are the absolute bee's knees. They are unbeatable. But... When I got this aircraft and I started flying it, I really couldn't figure out where this fits in terms of a simulation fan's hangar. You know, it's, it's, it is it's IFR capable, I guess, kinda. You can plug in various GPS add-ons. I've got the uh, Flight One GTN 650 plugged into this. So you can make it work with modern day uh, procedures and navigation and all that good stuff, but it, it's slow. It's not particularly easy to fly. Well, it is, but we'll get into why it's not as well in a second. And, you know, I just can't see, couldn't see the point. Anyway, I went to Flight SimCon last year and I had dinner with Scott, Scott Gentile from A2A and his son. And I was sitting down with him and we were talking about aircraft and talking about videos. And I brought up, you know, I got the T6, but I haven't done a video on it yet because I can't figure out what's the point of doing this aircraft, other than to capture the beauty and grace of what is a fantastic looking and iconic aircraft, I really couldn't figure out the whole point of it. Most of A2A's aircraft do have a point to them. If you really look deep into them, they have a really defined point, like the 182 and the 172. The 172 trainer in particular, the point was, let's see if we can bring the A2A world, that ultra-realism living aircraft with AccuSim, to a modern training aircraft and produce what is effectively a training aid on your computer. Makes perfect sense to me. The Spitfire, a complete icon of aviation, same with the Mustang, who wouldn't want to go and produce an A2A AccuSim powered version of those aircraft. The Texan here though, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm talking about it with Scott and Scott said to me that he wraps up the Texan in a single phrase, it's a landing simulator. So that noodled around my brain for quite a while. The Texan is a landing simulator. And then recently, about a week, two weeks ago, I started flying this again and really studying the amazing manual that comes with this. A2A aircraft always come with amazing PDF manuals, but really studying this one and really trying to get everything down on how to manage this aircraft and fly it and looked at it from the point of view of a landing simulator. So if it's a landing simulator, let's do everything by the book, let's follow the procedures, let's really try and land this, fly this and then land it the best way possible and suddenly everything changed. You see, counter to what I said, it is an easy aircraft to fly. You can start this up in no time flat, get up in the air and do all the stuff you want to do in the air. No time flat, it's pretty easy to fly, but when you start really studying it, when you really dive into that manual, when you really dive into AccuSim and what AccuSim is doing to power this aircraft, something amazing happens. It becomes just an incredible work of art. Once you really get into this aircraft and study everything it can do and all the nuances of managing it and effectively virtually owning it, it becomes the most amazing aircraft I think I've ever flown in a sim. To the point I was thinking about this and writing up notes on this last night and I think this is actually extremely close to replacing the B-17 as my all-time favorite simulated aircraft. It is that good. Once you really get into doing everything by the book and really understanding what's going on and understanding the nuances behind what's going on, this is probably the most realistic aircraft I think I've ever flown in prepared or FSX. And it's just a joy. It has um, quirks to it that take some learning and some mastering. And you can gloss over them. Like I said, you can start it up and jump into the air and gloss over all the quirks and all the finesse and all the beauty if you want to, but you're missing out. It's, it has quirks and understanding them and learning them and managing them is part of the fun of this aircraft. Learning how to keep the aircraft stable, learning how to fly it really well. My goodness, the, the sense of achievement when you do that is beyond compare. Now that's not to say I'm an expert on this aircraft. I'm not. 
I'm still fairly early on in it. I think I'm about nine or 10 hours since I reinstalled it and I've forgotten how many hours before. So very, very new to this still, but it has grown on me so much. And in the vein of what Scott said to me at dinner last year, that this is a landing simulator, this first first impressions video, planning to do a few, uh, is gonna look at landing. We're gonna do a pattern and land. I'm gonna show you around the aircraft and start it up and fly it and show you all that good and lovely stuff. Let me take a little walk around here if I can. Now I'm using Chase Plane to manage my cameras and it's already causing me problems. There we go, because I do have Track IR turned on and Track IR is not supposed to be enabled. As always with an A2A aircraft, look at the attention to detail on this beastie. It is absolutely sublime. Every single detail on this aircraft modeled at redonkulous levels of detail. And I actually have Chase Plane's camera controls set up to move a little bit too fast, which is why it all looks a little bit jerky right here. But it's a work of art, it really is. Everything here, you can, you can almost see where a human has uh, hammered out these panels to get them into shape, to rivet them in place on the frame. It's absolutely beautiful. Incredible attention to detail on this aircraft. Probably, possibly, one of A2A's greatest works, I think, in terms of the visual modeling, and later on you'll see in terms of the flight modeling. Incidentally, this is a fully aerobatic aircraft. You can use it to practice aerobatics, and it's one of the very few simulated aircraft out there that can actually perform all the aerobatic maneuvers in FSX and prepared absolutely correctly. So if you're into aerobatics, then this is one to check out. Look at this, look, look. You can see the cable there attaching, or the, sh the uh, rod attached to the cable, attached to the rudder. Pretty cool. The level of detail in this goes as far as the tail here. It, it's very, very, very hard to, to show this on a camera, but I'll try. The tail is actually offset from the center line of the aircraft by two degrees. That two degree offset is to counter the uh, yaw from the propeller. Pretty crazy stuff. And being accuracy, it's a living, breathing aircraft. No two flights are the same. Uh, it does track how long it's been since you last flown it, and that does have an effect on the aircraft. So what you're supposed to do, for example, is the way you shut down the aircraft, you're supposed to shut it down in a certain way, but over time, if you don't shut it down absolutely correctly, oil can pool at the bottom of the cylinders, which can give you uh, a hydraulic lock when you try to turn the propeller. And so to deal with that, you're supposed to put a drain kit on the aircraft. And if you forgot, as I did, then you would bring up one of the typical A2A pop-ups here. And I think somewhere up here, there should be a drain kit. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, oil clean kit, there we go. So we'll attach the oil clean kit and we should see that now hanging there it is, hanging from the nose, and we'll give this a minute or two, and it will actually drain that oil that is collected in the bottom of the cylinders into this bucket down here. And then when I remove that, you don't see the animation, but when I remove it, it tips the oil back into the engine, ready to go, so we don't have any problems starting this beastie up. Now, in terms of being a landing simulator, it's a tricky beast to land. There's actually two ways of landing this. Uh, the classic way is to bring it down on all three wheels. So you're gonna bring it down at this angle of attack, straight onto the runway, typically about 65 miles an hour. It's okay and fairly easy to control at that point, although the aircraft does have a tendency to ground loop, which is where it will suddenly turn to the right or left and start basically running off the runway, which is not very good at all, and you do risk some serious accidents. The other way is to bring it down on the main gear only and then slow down just on the main gear. And once you reach a slow enough speed, then you lower the tail onto the ground. I've not mastered that way of landing yet. I, d I wouldn't say I've mastered the three-point landing yet, but I can do the three-point landings more often than not. And the, two, the uh, main wheel landings, not so much. It's a very, very tricky aircraft to manage. That tail wheel is very interesting as well. It's controlled or locked and unlocked from the main stick, from the joystick. So if you push forward on the stick, it unlocks the tail wheel, which lets you do some crazy maneuvers on the ground. A typical thing you'll see from Texans at air shows, uh, for example, is they'll push the, the joystick forward, unlock the tail wheel, lock one of the brakes, power up the, the engine, you know, really rev it quite high, turn on the smoke and basically do burnouts, which is very cool. Unfortunately, prepared frame rate can't keep up with that much smoke, so I'm not gonna demonstrate that. If you pull it back, then it locks the tail wheel, then you have just, it, it feels quite docile on the ground and relatively easy to taxi, but does take a bit of getting used to. So there's a bit of finesse and, and stuff to learn, even in taxiing this and maneuvering it around the airport, which is very cool. The airport, incidentally, today is Orbex's Migs Field. I thought, why not? 
since this is a return to proper flying videos and prepared, let's return to where it all began for me, which is MIGS Field, but back in FSX before MIGS Field in the real world closed and Microsoft decided to remove it from the sim. Thanks, Microsoft. Okay, that should have drained now. So I'm gonna remove the uh, oil clean kit. I'll remove the pedo cover. Let's remove the tie downs, the wheel chocks and the control lock and we'll turn the generator switch off. Don't know why that was on. Incidentally, being an A2A aircraft, there is a full maintenance hanger included, which is on shift seven. And on shift seven, you can do all sorts of stuff like change the starter between a direct crank to an inertia starter. You can change the antenna type on the back of the aircraft to none or the one that I've currently got. You can change the canopy style. You can check the compression of the engine. You can overhaul everything. It's actually very, very cool. Everything you would expect from an A2A Accusim aircraft. And it's just amazing. Now, let's jump in. See if we can start this wee beastie up. Now track IR is enabled. Now I'm gonna center track IR and turn that off for the time being. Then we'll bring back those little displays. Now I know you guys can't read them. I do record at 4K and I know that's not gonna scale very well, but I've got these things up on the screen as an aid and memoir for me. So before starting, we're gonna hand turn the prop through nine blades. And this is where we're gonna find out if a hydraulic lock has occurred. I'm gonna click on hand prop here and the blades are the blade moving. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So no hydraulic lock. And by doing that with the hand cranking of the propeller there, we've moved the oil around and got everything ready for startup. We've removed the chocks, the tie downs and the pitot cover. The controls are unlocked. Flaps are currently down. I think, no, they're actually up. I did leave them up when I last landed it. The trims, neutral, carb heat is off. There's carb heat, forward is off. There's my trims there. I'm gonna trim this. We'll trim that back to about 11 o'clock. Slightly nose up. The gear switch, gear lever is down. This one right here. The radios, let's check that these are all off. I do have a tendency to leave things turned on in the cockpit, bad frugal. All the electrical switches here are off. This one is a bright and dim light switch, so it doesn't matter which position it's in. Autopilot is off and the circuit breakers, which of course all work, are all pushed in. Wonderful. So, Check the prop has been pulled nine blades, which it has. Well, we need to prime, which we're gonna do now. It says five strokes of primer if cold, but we'll get onto that. So fuel selector on desired tanks. So I'm gonna move this onto the right tank. I've got 50% fuel in each of the wing tanks. We'll start with the right and switch to the left when we're downwind. Throttle now needs to go about half an inch forward. Very hard to gauge that, obviously, in a sim. Prop is full decrease. There's, uh, that's mixture. There's prop. Back here is full decrease. Mixture, full rich. Great, battery now can go on, and we'll prime this, unlock the primer, and prime it five times. So there's one, two, four, and five. Now we'll leave this unlocked. So you might need to apply a bit of prime when we're starting the engine. Now the next thing we do is engage the starter, which is kind of unique on this aircraft as well. So let's unlock track IR. The starter is a pedal on the floor down there. That's how we, we do the starter. So we're gonna press the starter, wait for four blades, and then turn the mags up to both. So let me reset my view here. We'll move over, press the starter. One, two, three, four, both. And it says slowly prime one to three strokes. And she's alive, just one stroke. And we'll lock the primer now. Looking now at the oil pressure coming up and the oil temperature, oil pressure is looking good. So we'll turn the generator on and now we'll turn the avionics on, which means we can turn the transponder on and the radio. GPS is the Flight One GTN 650, that should come on on its own. Wish it has. I think we're good to go. Just gonna let this warm up. It is an Accusim aircraft. If you don't let it warm up, then bad things happen. Turn on the map. Not that it's gonna be very useful because Migs Field doesn't actually exist in the sim. It's an Orbex add-on for a closed airport. So nothing's gonna happen. What I should have done though is turn the nav lights on. We'll turn those on right now. And we'll just let this aircraft warm up. 
So we're looking for 40 PSI on the oil pressure. Let me move the camera down here. There we go. So we have we have way over 40, so we're good. At which point we can move the prop now to full increase. Transponder should be on out. Now it is. We need to check that the heading and the barometric pressure are set. Well, I got active sky running, so we can tune the radio here. Can do it over there as well if I want to. So 12200. We'll pick up the barometric. Kilo Charlie Golf X-ray Airport Information Echo 1217 Zulu Weather Wind 174 at 5 Visibility 10 Sky Condition Few Clouds at 16000 Temperature 5 Dew Point Minus 3 Altimeter 3006 Advise on Initial Contact Alright, 3006 Let's go back up to the other view that I had and I'll just lean in it here and we'll turn that up to 3006 Putting this airport about 600 feet above sea level which is there. Fuel selectors, we're still on the, the same tank that we started on, so we're just fine. Moving on, we're going to do a hydraulic system check. Here's the hydraulic pressure, or sorry, here's the hydraulic pressure down here. So we're going to lower the flaps. The flaps work in a unique way as well. There's a lock position in there, and then we're going to hold them in the down. You'll see the flap indicator moving down. Notice the hydraulic pressure dropped. Once the flaps stop moving, hydraulic pressure comes back up. So we move the switch into lock again. And then move it to the up position. Flaps come up, hydraulic pressure drops. And once the flaps stop moving, pressure comes back up. Throttle now to 1600 RPM. Which is about there, and we're going to cycle the prop. Wonderful. Let the RPM come back up. Now it's on full increase on the prop. We'll turn carb heat on and watch the RPM drop. There it goes. We'll put that back now. RPM should come back up. Now the throttle to the field manifold pressure, which is about 30. Field manifold pressure is the pressure in the manifold pressure dial when nothing's happening on the ground before you started. I remember seeing it at about 30. And that should give us 2,000 RPM, which it does. I'm going to turn the mag now to the right mag, watch for a drop there at 100 RPM, turn it back to both. Left mag, 100 RPM, turn it back to both. Now cruise mixture check, we're going to come down to 1,900 RPM. I'm going to pull the mixture back and we should notice a slight increase in the RPM. And then a drop. There it goes. And now we go back to idle on the throttle. And we should be four to 500 RPM. You can't cut or chop the throttle in this aircraft. It will backfire, you'll get detonations and all sorts of nasty stuff going on. And you can cause some serious problems if you do that. Just be aware of this if you do get the aircraft. So we're all done. Now we're ready to go, I think. So what I'm gonna do, I don't have taxi lights in this. I'm gonna turn my landing lights on. I'm gonna leave the canopy open for now. Reset track IR, put my feet on the rudder pedals, and this is where all hell breaks loose. So, brakes are off. Gonna increase the throttle just a little bit. Look how little power this needs to actually move. Just a tiny bit more, there we go, we're moving already, and it will pick up speed very, very quickly. So to turn onto that taxi line, I'm gonna go stick forward and hit the left brake. That increase in power so we don't grind to a halt. Now right brake to stop the turn. Pretty crazy stuff. I'm gonna get myself established on this taxiway here and then we'll start the traditional S turns for a tail dragger like this. Maybe about there, again, opposite brake to counter that movement. Now we can go back on the stick and we can do more traditional style S turns. So looking out the right, we'll pitch, not pitch, but yaw to the left about 10 degrees, good. The oar to the right. Track IR is getting obscured a little bit by my microphone. Good. Looks like we're all clear. I'm back on the power a little bit. Like I said earlier, it wants to pick up speed. That mighty radial engine on the front of this aircraft is very, very powerful indeed. And the aircraft just wants to run away. 
You need to be aware of that and stay in control of it. There we go. Coming up on our turning onto the runway now. Trying not to let things get out of hand here. Now I could take this turning, I could take the next one. Hmm. You know what, I'm going to take this one. So, I'm just going to come off the throttle here. Let the aircraft slow. That beautiful chug 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 sound of this engine. Alright, now forward on the stick. A little bit more power. Gently dab the right brake. Oh, a little bit too much brake and we ground to a halt. Now I increased the throttle there, but I backed off very quickly because there's a, almost a bit of a turbo lag. You increase the power and then the aircraft responds. It's not instantaneous, although it sounds like the engine's, you know, responding instantly to your inputs, and it is, but it's such a big aircraft, it takes a little while to respond. Strobe's on now as we take to the runway. As we'll turn the pitot heat on as well. Looking left, we're all clear there. Looking right, we're all clear there. And again, trying to line up here, gently dabbing the brakes. Now takeoff in this is a little stressful. You need to be paying attention. Otherwise it will ground loop. Trying to line up. Oh. One thing I want to get in all my practicing on this is really manage the taxi so it's just fluid, which it currently is not. All right, so we're going to increase the throttle to about 32 manifold pressure. And then once we get up in the air, we're going to reduce it to 3,000, sorry, to 30, and reduce the prop to 2,000 RPM. That should be just fine. And after takeoff, we're going to trim for 110 miles per hour climbing. At 300 feet, we'll close the canopy, also lift the gear up. Uh, might actually lift the gear up a little bit before that, but here we go. So, forward on the stick to keep the tailwheel unlocked for the time being to give us some steering. Slowly, but with purpose, increasing the throttle now up to 32. Watching that nose, seeing if it turns. A little bit of turn there, okay. Now as the nose comes down, I'm gonna go right rudder now. Just to keep us on the center line a little bit. A little bit of back pressure and the aircraft will literally just fly itself off the runway. Like so. And we're climbing. Now the airfield was at 600 feet, so 900 feet is going to give us 3,000. Going to bring back the power now to 30 and 2,000 RPM. Power first, prop second. Bring the gear up now. Listen as the gear comes up. I'm going to trim this now. We are at 110, but I'm, I'm actually holding the stick to do it. And while this is climbing now, we'll just close the canopy. Try to keep this climbing all the way up to about 2,000 feet above sea level. A little bit off the course that I was on when I took off. And then we'll level off up there and bring the power back once again to about 25 manifold pressure and about 1,900 RPM. You can already see how alive this is. Everything's shaking. These needles that bouncing around. Beautiful piece of work. I know that's a characteristic of A2A aircraft that they do stuff like that. I just find it amazing and wonderful. The attention to detail that guys, those guys put in is phenomenal. All right, as we come up now to 1900 feet, gonna bring the power back to 25 manifold pressure. Bring the prop back to 1900. Well, nose down and try to get this trimmed for straight and level flight. Now at this point, let's switch on over to the other fuel tank. Yeah, wrong way for all. There we go. Turn those landing lights off. And go back to trimming. Climbing a little bit here. I want to show you, it's not the fastest aircraft in the world, but it does pick up speed in a very solid manner. Trying to trim this, still holding back on the stick a little bit, trying to feed in trim. By the way, I've been studying the Connie as well, A2A's new Connie. If you get an A2A AccuSim aircraft, really read the manual. And I don't mean that in terms of read the manual and find out how the aircraft works, but really read the manual, in particular the introduction. 
that they have every time looking at the history of the aircraft. Those things are an amazingly interesting read, especially for the Connie and quite a lot for this Texan as well. Very, very interesting stuff there. Lots of history, aviation history covered. All right, we've pretty much got this. Look how beautiful this is to fly. I'm going to make a left-hand turn get us onto downwind. So I'm just going to roll the nose to the left and then feed in my rudder pedals for a coordinated turn. And you can fly this now very visually, not really looking at the dials, but really getting a picture of where the horizon is on the canopy and kind of holding it there. It's a joy to fly, but it takes practice. It really does take quite a bit of practice to get it good. But it's so rewarding when you do. I think A2A, again, have really captured the spirit of aviation with this aircraft, which is very, very important and something very few other add-on manufacturers do. There we go. So we're pretty much downwind. A little bit off course, but that's fine. That'll bring us down to 2000 again. Now, the pattern. How to do the pattern. What we're going to be doing is reducing our speed down to about 120 miles per hour. But before we do that, what I'm going to do is a horn check. So I'm going to pull the throttle back all the way to idle. Okay, the horn's working. We'll bring the power back up now, but less than it was. Just get us down to about 120. I'm going to hold that speed and make sure the prop is set at about 2,000 RPM once we get there. So it's slowly coming down now. Now we're losing altitude. The aircraft's nose is very responsive to power. So as you come off the power, the nose will drop. If you increase the power, the nose will rise. So I'm a little bit under, under speed here, so I'm going to increase the power. Nose is coming up. Should be about there. I'm going to increase the prop now to 2,000. Let's drop the gear. I'm a little bit under the altitude that I wanted to be at, but that's just fine. There's the runway. We're going to try for the three-point landing. So speed is good, 120 miles per hour now, looking pretty nice. We need to make sure our mixture is full rich, which it is, because I hadn't leaned it. There was no point in leaning it at that point. But now that we're kind of leveled off, a little bit too slow actually, I'm going to drop the throttle all the way back again and check that the horn does not come on. It does not. All right, increasing power once again to try to hold us at that 120 miles per hour. And then just before we turn on to the base leg, we're going to slow down to about 110, at which point we can start lowering some flaps. I am actually still holding the joystick back quite a lot here. Now I'm flying this with a Thrustmaster Warhawk. My old Thrustmaster Warhawk actually broke, so I ordered a new one. So I've got the same throttle I've always had, but a new Thrustmaster Warhawk, and I find this to be a wonderful joystick for flying an aircraft like this because it's heavy and solid, just like the aircraft. It, it, it conveys a lot. It's quite immersive. Not really on the right course, but that's fine. We'll fix that in a second. So bringing the power back now. Let's put our landing lights on, or they already are on, so we're good there. Or, no they're not. Now they are. We're going to slow down now to about 110. And we'll start our turn onto base. So again, looking left, making sure we're clear. Roll, feeding in left rudder now to coordinate the turn. Beautiful feeling when you get it right. Even in the sim. Where's the runway? There it is. We're descending nicely. There's my 110. Orbex, by the way, have done an amazing job with this scenery, haven't they? And it's so good if you used to fly the older FS Microsoft Flight Simulators, not FSXs, the old flight simulators that had MIGs. It's so nice to be back at MIGs. Very nostalgic for us oldies. All right, let's drop about 10 degrees of flaps. And we'll start our turn around. Again, feeding in some left rudder there to try to coordinate this turn. Dropping a little bit fast, gonna bring the speed down now to about 90. So a little bit more flaps now. I'm going to be crossing the threshold at 90. And then for touchdown, the stick, we're going to pull it back as we cross the threshold to start the flare. And at touchdown, the stick will actually be almost fully back to get that three-point landing down. 600 feet to go. A little bit high. Oh my goodness. Let's go almost full flaps. No need to go completely full. There. 
There's our 90 miles per hour. Dropping a little bit too fast now. Beating in a little bit of power there to slow down the rate of descent. Now, as the aircraft slows down, the wings are not, the ailerons in particular, are not very responsive. You need to plan ahead with this aircraft and really set up the approach properly, otherwise you're, you're just going to have a bad day. It's not going to work out very well. I'm not quite at the threshold yet, but getting there, slight crosswind. Oh my goodness! And we've crossed it now, so I'm going to pull off the power. I'm going to start flaring here. Ooh. Should be touching down at about 65. Nice little squeak from the wheels. Now pulling back on the stick, applying the brakes evenly. We don't want a ground loop. Watching that nose, watching the nose for any yaw, like it's starting to do now, so that we don't get caught up in some nasty ground loop. Starting to turn already. And there we go. Now release the back pressure on the stick, a little bit of power. Let's pull the flaps up. I'm gonna push the stick forwards gently apply some right brake and a bit more power so we don't grind to a halt on the runway. Turned a little bit too soon. Now one thing I did forget to do on the landing of 300 feet I should have opened the canopy as a safety measure which I did not do. But anyway, let's open the canopy now so we don't overheat and see if we can taxi back and go through the rather intricate shutdown procedure and it's intricate because it's AccuSim. It's a living, breathing aircraft and you want the next time you fly this for the aircraft to work and for it to start without any hassles. That requires a little bit of forethought. How are we doing here? Mind these people by the Cessna here. I think we'll pull past them and do a little donut so that we're facing the right way. Very good. But really, like I said at the beginning of this video, a beautiful plane, but that beauty only really comes out in this one. It's, it's a strange one. It only really comes out when you do what the name says. It's a study aircraft, you should study it. Why don't you study it and start to truly understand some of the quirks and the nuances of this A2A simulation. It, it just comes alive in an amazing way and as a result it is rapidly becoming my favorite A2A aircraft of all time. There we go. So let's stop there. To apply the brakes, we apply the brakes, pull the parking brake and let go of the tow brakes. Now we do have over here, after landing, flaps are up. I'm going to set the trim back to neutral. There. Uh, props increase, which they are, they're just fine. Now shut down, radio transponder at this point needs to go off, so we'll turn that off. We're going to set the throttles to 1450 RPM. Now I know throttle controls manifold pressure, but we're setting enough power that we get 1450 RPM here, which is there. Now we're going to reduce the prop to full decrease for 20 seconds. I don't have a stopwatch, I'm going to kind of guess 20 seconds because I'm recording and 20 seconds is actually a very long time to sit talking about nothing. I'll probably do it a little bit sooner than that. Prop full decrease, 20 seconds. Let's say we're there. Now we cut the mixture. And once the prop stops turning, well, we'll turn the mags off now, but once the prop stops turning now, we are going to turn the avionics off here, can't turn that one off, we'll turn the avionics switch off, generator, battery, and then just run around the cockpit and make sure the switches are off, which they're not, I didn't turn my strobes off, which I should have done, pedo heat can go off, and we will reset the fuel here, back to off. Now we can pop on outside and tie this beastie down, we'll put the oil clean kit in, we'll put the tie downs wheel chocks. We have an empty cockpit. Uh, I can open the rear canopy by the way here. Look. Isn't that great? Just simple, simple little things. There is an empty cockpit and I'm not seeing where it is. 
um, the empty plane. So that's all done, and we'll put the pedo cover on. And that's it, that's my first impressions, first flight on video of the A2A T6 Texan. An amazing, an amazing, amazing, amazing aircraft. If you love period aircraft, this is one to get. If you're not sure that you love period aircraft, this is one to get and study the hell out of that manual, really learn how to fly it. I, I was reading the manual as well and studying for this video and there's a whole section on flying this in bad weather because the aircraft is very heavy, it's very susceptible to winds and wind changes and stuff like that. It's actually a bit of a challenge in bad weather and I want to do that next. But I think what I'll probably do is a simple cross, simple cross country next and then uh, maybe tackle some more obscure weather, maybe even start doing some longer trips with this. As always, my name is Frugal. Thank you so very much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you very soon.